We're here to answer your game, gaming, or game night questions. Tonight, we've got a topic from longtime fan of the show, Emmett O'Brien, who writes, Anyone here use dice trays for rolling? My wife wants me to make some for the group. My question is, is there a difference in usability or transportability in the different sizes and shapes of trays? <laughs> I've seen square and hexagon trays. My brother-in-law has a narrow tray that seems like it would be easier for transport. What's the difference? For a follow-up question, is the added bulk of a dice tower worth it? Well, thanks for the question there, Emmett. Um, let's start off with dice trays, since that's the first thing Emmett brings up here. And I guess it's, it's good to hear Emmett again. Um, yes, I use them, but not often. I, I have... I don't know, mixed thoughts on whether or not dice trays are worth it. And a lot of it has to do with exactly what you're playing and where you're playing. Like in general, the average board game, I don't think you need them. The average role-playing game where you've just got like a small handful of dice, you don't really need them. But when I've got a big pool of dice, that's where I want something to corral them so they don't end up all over the table. Basically, the bigger the pool, the more I want one. Now, an example of one of the first games that I started using a dice tray with was Sorcerer. Uh, Sorcerer is a dueling, excuse me. Sorcerer is a dueling card game from Wise Wizard Games where you can end up rolling a ton of dice and checking for damage. And that was great to keep it in one place. And actually, the game suggests you use the box lid to do this. So, like, they they knew it themselves. But the box lid's big and takes up a lot of room, and you got to kind of peek to look in, and I found a dice tray bigger. Another one that I always use my dice tray for is Big Trouble in Little China. Um, not for the player dice, because you don't roll enough of your own dice, but for the damage and attack dice. And that's great, because uh, my particular tray actually has a staging area, and you just put all the dice in the staging area, and you can pass the tray around, and people can pick them out of the staging area and roll what they want and then you can kind of show everyone what they've got now most recently um i just shared the picture of this on instagram was robotech invid invasion which we reviewed a couple weeks ago uh, at one point during the second phase you are dealing with dice pools of up to 15 dice and if you use all of those on one attack that's a lot of dice now on the rpg side i don't use them for dnd Right. There's just not enough dice, although I know with advantage, at least maybe now you're rolling two D20s a little more often. But in general, you're rolling a D20 and a damage die and, and that's about it. But I would definitely use one for Shadowrun, um, the Alien RPGs, another big dice pool game. But another one that uses dice pools is Magical Kitties, which we'll be talking about later. But your biggest dice pool is six. Six dice is kind of borderline to me. Two or three, I don't bother. Now, where I do like having the dice tray is if I'm not playing at home. So if I'm going to go to the local game store, it's a good way to transport the dice I need so I can throw them in the dice, the, the dice tray and just bring that with me. And it's a way to, you know, keep my dice corralled at a game store. I'm more worried about stuff going on the floor and stuff getting mixed in with other people's dice and things like that than I am at home. So it's a good way to corral things. I also always use one when using any metal dice sets. Now, these are becoming really popular lately. There are tons out there. The ones I have are a little older. They're actually 3D printed on Shapeways, but they have some really sharp edges. And I don't want to damage my game table. So I make sure to always use one of those. Um, the other thing is for live streaming. They're great because they keep the dice in one spot. The other thing about live streaming is you don't want dice noise. The dice noise just isn't fun mm. on microphones uh, and it can get weird with noise cancellation things. So uh, for me, I haven't really used one much other than Sorcerer. The, I, was, I played Sorcerer yeah. with you guys and the dice tray, but I did decide that I wanted one. Unfortunately, mm -hmm. that was a month before or before the pandemic because it was specifically for the next con we were about to be going mm -hmm. to. Con games, I think, are a great place to have a dice tray and just to keep whatever dice you're using right there in front of you. And if someone else wants to grab them, that's fine. But you've got, you know, a nice little thing to carry around and, and keep contained on a table mm -hmm. with, with a bunch of people. And you, you don't have to worry about dice skittering off. And, and you know, what, what are the rules at this table about dice on the floor yeah. or whatever? It's just a lot more convenient in a con setting, again, away from home, just like at the mm -hmm. FLGS. So that's a bit about what I think of Dice Towers, what Sean thinks of Dice Towers. What I want to do now dice trays. is <laughs> Dice Trays, sorry, Ooh, jumping ahead. Dice Trays, what I think about Dice Trays, what Sean thinks about Dice Trays. What I'd like to do is kind of 
come up with a list, like brainstorm a bunch of reasons why you might want a dice tray. And yes, this is going to repeat some of the stuff we just said, but I wanted to kind of get out of the way, but why I would use one. And whereas this, I'm going to mention things that I may not be the reason I want them, but it might be reasons people have told me over the years or other benefits I've seen for using dice trays. So I'm going to start off with, as I said, huge dice pool. So, so just maintaining large numbers of dice, a whole bunch of stuff at once. So that if you're rolling lots of dice, it's just way better to keep them in one place and corral them. Absolutely. And then similarly, if even if you don't have a lot of dice, if you've got a lot of stuff on the table, you don't want to be knocking those miniatures mm -hmm. that are, uh, that are, you know, you've just spent 15 minutes making sure you've got line of sight to the orc party. <laughs> you don't want to knock that miniature off and mess things up. Yeah, or if you paint your miniatures or you convert them or you build your own scenery, you don't want your dice knocking stuff over and banging into things. Okay. Now, I mentioned sharing dice in um, Big Trouble in Little China, and that is a huge reason that I use dice trays. And actually, the first dice tray I ever used, I picked up at Value Village. And it was actually this rattan lid, probably for like um, a rice steamer or something. But it just looked kind of neat and old and beat up and, well, medieval, quote unquote. And I bought that. Because I'm like, oh, this will be great for Warhammer because Warhammer Fantasy Roleplay 3rd Edition specifically uses unique narrative dice that only come with that game. And my players, I wasn't going to force my players to go buy their own dice. So I made sure to have at least one set and I bought a spare set to mix them together. And we shared the dice for that whole game. I know there's some RPG gamers out there cringing about sharing dice, but that's what we did. If anyone wanted to buy their own set, they could. And actually one of my friends, I think did, I think Steve did buy his own set. But anyway... What we found was such a pain was here, pass this, pass that, pass this, pass that, pass me these dice. Whereas we kept all the dice in the dice tray, we passed over the person, they took out the ones they needed, they rolled them, then they put all the dice back in the tray and they pass off to the next person. We also did that with Fancy Flight Game Star Wars for the same reason. And as I said, we did it for um, Big Trouble in Little China. I've done it for Marvel heroic role playing. Being able to share a shared set of dice, a dice tray is a great way to move those around without having to like pass around thing, big things of dice. Now, on the opposite side, they're also awesome for the exact opposite reason, <laughs> which is the reason I generally was considering, which is for that con game when everyone has their own favorite dice, everyone loves their dice and wants their dice to roll for them, which is a totally RPG thing, but yep. it allows you to keep that all together. And especially in games like fake games or something like that, where you may have a lot of dice that are the same, you mm -hmm. don't have to worry about mixing them all up. You've got your dice in your tray. And then actually it's something I hadn't thought of originally, but during a pandemic, you don't want to share dice. That's a good way to keep your stuff and your six foot or <laughs> is it six foot now, two meter, two meter, keep your two meter space. You're, you're six feet apart. If you happen to be gaming, wear your mask and keep your dice in your tray. There you go. Uh, the other thing, um, like I said, I've used mine for is this, they're actually a good way to store and transport dice. Now, this doesn't apply to the average RPG gamer who owns 40 sets of dice, but for uh, board games or, or things with smaller sets of dice, it's a great way to do it. So, for example, when I was running Mouse Guard, I made sure just toss all the, because again, Mouse Guard's a game with unique dice. I toss them all in the dice tray, and then I just pack that with the game, and I bring it over to the local game store, and there's all the Mouse Guard dice there. Now, that depends on the type. A lot of people are going to have the standard sort of fold, fold flat type where you're going to transport that separately from the dice. You can't keep dice in it. But if you do have the lidded type, they yeah. are fantastic for uh, for transporting. Yeah, and obviously that has a, has a different bonus, which we'll get to in a minute, because that's on there to mention. Yep. Uh, the other thing is you want a soft surface. Uh, it's a soft surface, which is going to be better for metal and gemstone dice. This is a heads up for anyone. You see those super expensive gemstone dice? Yes, they look so beautiful. They cost $90. You buy them. You roll them once on your game table, they'll probably break. But more importantly, never let them hit each other. That is what I've learned about gemstone dice. Thankfully, not by personal habit. Uh, I don't have the money to buy dice that cost that much. But for those that can, one at a time. Roll one gemstone die at a time. Even in the softest tray you've got, if the two dice hit each other, they will chip. So, yeah, just a soft surface. It's, it's something better than rolling on wood or whatever the game table you're on or even plastic. It's going to be quieter. It's going to be more pleasant. And you're not going to damage your dice. Now, the other thing, going back to these RPG people and all these crazy <laughs> ideas they have, there are 100% a lot of RPG people out there who are superstitious about their dice. 
Mm -hmm. If I don't roll this dice first and this dice second, it won't work. If I don't roll them into my dice tray, it won't work. If I if it rolls off the table, I'm going to get another dice and replace it and never use that die again. Yep. Whatever the superstition is, RPG gamers have a lot of them because statistics are hard. So <laughs> dice are very magical to a lot of people and we live our lives with them and it's it's just something that just comes naturally even though we know in most cases it's utterly silly yep. most dice really aren't that expensive unless you're buying the steel and gemstone ones well, yeah. and so if you have to replace them every time it hits the floor so be it yeah that that's that's totally fair and here's another one is um dice trays help prevent rule disputes when a die rolls on the floor, what happens? Do you pick it up and you count the number or do you re-roll? What if it rolls cocked on the edge or what if it bounces off something? I know people that are like, they roll their dice on the table and if they hit anything, that's not a valid roll. It hit something. I'll notice most of those seem to be failing their rolls at this time, but we'll leave that apart or for later. So one of the things the dice tray does is has a boundary. So when you roll, it's really simple. If it doesn't land in the tray, it doesn't count. Doesn't matter how it landed, where it landed. And yes, a, you can technically have a die land cocked in a tray, but it's a lot less common than when you're rolling on your books and an uneven surface and your battle mat or whatever else is out there. Right. Now, again, we mentioned this before, but live streams. Mm -hmm. Aside from a softer surface, so you're not having as much of a, you know, dice on table noise for the mics to pick up. You've also got them in a limited space. So if you want to put that overhead camera in a place to see where the dice are rolling, on mm -hmm. camera, you know exactly where those dice are going to roll because you've yep. got your dice tray, tray there. And even then, what we've done on streams too is dice trays usually aren't very slippery, right? Like the surface is is um, textured in a way. The dice won't move around much, so you can often like, hey, pass me the tray and hold it up to the camera without changing the results on the dice. There's no way you could do that without a dice tray of some sort, right? Like the dice are on the table. You could pick up each individual one, show it to a camera. And to be honest, that was the reason I got the fancy dice tray I have <laughs> was actually to use it on live streams. But I do use it quite often. So... Some people will claim that dice trays include randomness. Now, I haven't seen any official studies that seem to actually prove this, but I know people who swear that rolling on a tray is more random than rolling on a table. Though, honestly, if you're really worried about that randomness factor and making sure the dice are random, you probably want to look at a dice tower, which we'll get to in a bit. Yeah, there's, there's people have ways of rolling dice. Uh, and I freely admit, I am a person who tries not to look at how people roll their dice because it bothers me if I see people roll in certain ways. Um, but it is, it may be a fact that people are generally a little bit more vigorous when rolling mm -hmm. into a dice tray because they don't have to worry about skittering off the table. Uh, mm -hmm. And that extra bit of force helps them bounce around a little more, whether it's any yeah. more random, maybe not. Yeah. But it's not just dropping them out of your hands neatly onto the table. Yeah. So a well-designed die, even dropping it from like half a foot is going to bounce enough that it's, if it's properly balanced, it's going to work. Um, there was something I was going to say and I lost it. So I was thinking about the, the, I've seen people do some interesting, yeah. <laughs> oh, backspin. Me, me, if I'm rolling, I, I, I'm all about the backspin. You roll the D20 kind of like this, so it bounces forward and rolls back to you. That's a little harder to do with the dice tower. Um, but the only other thing that the trays do to increase randomness is by having sides, right? So there's something for the dice to bounce off of. And this is the reason that if you go play craps at a casino, you have to roll the dice hard enough that they bounce off the back wall. And that you get that in a smaller scale in a dice tray. Right. So do you have anything else? Uh, those were some rough ones I kind of noted down ahead of time, plus a couple I came up with as we were going. The reasons people might want a dice tray. Now, what we will be doing is after the main topic, we'll jump into, into the lobby because I do see some nice comments in there, and I'd love to see those keep flowing. So if you've got more to say on the topic in the lobby, please go, go right ahead, and we'll jump in after we get through our thoughts on the topic. Not no. that we're trying to sound better than you or anything, but... No, I think really realistically, it, it's that, you know, the containment, the noise and the safety uh, yeah. and, and so we didn't actually right we, met, we didn't mention noise in this list. We mentioned it when we were talking about our stuff. So, yes, it reduces noise if you get the right kind of dice tray, <laughs> which is something we'll get to in a minute where I start talking about things you want to look for in a dice tray, because I have seen some dice trays that are definitely louder than normal. But yeah, padded tray, getting a padded tray to reduce the noise is good. A um, couple other things. 
that I think I will toss in here is one, they can look pretty. They're, they're a cool piece of gamer swag. You can get them with logos on them or whatever, your, your favorite house or your army's logo or your orc war face or whatever, whatever you want, or just generic, cool looking things. Um, you can get them in various colors. So again, if you collect an army or if there's a certain color you prefer or your character co- carries a tabard, um, you can get them with thematic shapes. Uh, though those are a little more rare and well, again, might get into the advantages, disadvantages into a bit of shape. Um, but they're just a cool thing. They're a cool piece of, they're, they're a cool tchotchke, right? There's something neat to have. Yeah. And, uh, and if you really want to be boring like me, you can get one that's just completely plain black and shows off the dice nicely without showing go. itself off as a, uh, as a feature. It's a good point. All right. So let's flip things around. Uh, What's what are the disadvantages? Like, what, what, why wouldn't you want to use a dice tray? Look at all these awesome things we just thought of. That's a great reason to have dice trays. Well, why wouldn't you want a dice tray? Well, for one thing, it's something else. As a gamer, you're already carrying a bunch of stuff, whether mm-hmm. it's dice, pencils, papers, books, uh, your tablet, whatever you need, whatever it is you're carrying, whether it's board games or RPGs, you are carrying a bunch of stuff mm-hmm. and having a dice tray. It's just one more thing you have to worry about remembering to bring and remembering to bring home again. Yeah. Even at home, it's just still something else you got to go get from wherever it's stored. And you put, and we were talking about um, putting specific dice in the game. Well, if you play multiple different games, you got to take the dice out. You got to put them away at the end of the game and you got to put the dice for the next game you want to play in it. So it's definitely a thing. The other thing is they take up room. Um, you may have limited space. Uh, uh, dice trays in general are not very well done to stack on a shelf with a bunch of board games. You know, you can't get a ticket drive box that way. Well, you probably could, but the average dice tower is this like, I've got, I should have actually kept mine so I can hold it. It's behind me here, but it, like quite thick and takes up some space, um, which sometimes space is at a premium though. Of course there are some options regarding that, which we'll get into more, but which Sean just held up as well. Also, they can also just make dice harder to see. So depending Mm. on the size of your table and the size of your dice tray and the depth of your dice tray, uh, if you want to be able to see other people's rolls, uh, there are people who may not be as trustworthy or you just may be relying on seeing dice, seeing other people's rolls to calculate. If you're the DM, you may need to be thinking ahead based Mm -hmm. on what that person's rolling and it can just be harder to see if it's sitting in the middle of a dice tray or if it's up against the wall closest to you, you mm-hmm. can't peer down over the edge. It can just make things that much more difficult to see what's going on unless mm-hmm. you've got a camera mounted directly over top of it. But even then, you got to be able to see the video from that camera somewhere projected and not just shown on your stream. <laughs> so that's another part of it. Um, dice trays can be loud. Like Sean's saying, they're great for quieting things. But like I'm thinking back to that first wooden one I told you about with like bamboo on it. Oh, my gosh. Like it was actual rattan on the back. And you rolled into that. And it was like a clack, 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 clack. Which, to be honest, we kind of liked but <laughs> at first. But it does get annoying. Uh, worst ones are terrible uh, without some form of padding. Um a metal, I've seen a metal dice tray before, which I was kind of like, okay, but I guess someone thought it was neat. It looked, it was an ammo case, right? It was, a, it was, it was someone who liked, you know, cyberpunk, shadow run, gun bunny kind of thing. And they had this converted ammo case and, but, oh my gosh, but they're like, oh, it sounds like gunfire. Well, I'll teach your own, but I thought it was a little annoying. But the thing is, who cares if it's in your basement? Right. Unless you got sleeping kids, it's not a big deal. But think of the other people around you, especially if you're going out to a local play event. You don't want everyone to be able to hear every role you make during your game. Now, I think one of the big problems with them that a lot of people see, and one of the reasons I didn't have one for a long time, is they cost money. Mm -hmm. Everything in this hobby costs money. And if you're board gaming, you've got a box lid or there's a perfectly mm-hmm. good table you're role playing at that you can roll on as long as you're careful the dice will stay on the table. Yep. You don't need a dice tray. Nope. Yeah, you could always use the money to buy more games. That's what I generally <laughs> rather have is more games than a dice tray to be honest. And another reason that that dice trays can be a problem is they can distract from other things. Like you're like, oh, look at the dice tray and people are going to focus on that. But that's more new when you first bring it out. But I like the first time I brought a dice tray out to an RPG group, we wasted half an hour of people throwing their dice in the dang dice tray. And I'm like, come on. Yeah. But in general, I you just don't need them. Like, like 
like the, there's perfectly good other ways to roll. And the biggest one, like Sean said, grab the box lid, right? Like flip the lid over. Now, to be honest, I actually do the, the with it. I, I take my dice tray and I use the lid of my dice tray as a separate dice roller because it's even more padded than the felt bottom. It's actually kind of squishy. And that's the one I like to use for my metal dice. But I've used dice box lids for years. That's what we use for Warhammer. So Warhammer Fantasy Roleplay 3rd Edition has these little character boxes. And before I bought the wooden big thing, which I should have brought upstairs, we still have it. That would have been perfect for the backdrop. Um, we just passed around one of the lids for one of the, the character boxes and we use that. It worked good, but it, the lip was a little high and you had to kind of lean in to see it. And to be fair, I bought this for role playing at cons, but I've never used a dice tray at cons before. Yeah. I just wanted one moving forward. Uh, right. Again, I didn't need one, but it was something that as I was starting to, uh, I wish. Uh, sorry, I uh, wish I was going to more cons. Yeah, um, I, I thought it was something that I was finally going to just kind of penny up and and, and have around uh, mm -hmm. for the con tables. Well, that's fair. I, I probably should pack that dice tray for cons. I haven't yet, um, but that's a good idea, especially a good way to keep your dice as long as, as long as I have a way to carry it. Like I don't want to walk around with the thing in my hand the whole time, whereas right. yours is flat. You can throw it in a bag a lot easier than I yeah, can. Yeah, exactly. Mine will fit into a book almost, you know, basically yeah. as a bookmark. All right, that's that's what we got for why you might want dice trays and why you may not. Let's assume you do want one. All right, so you're going to go buy your dice tray. What do you think you want to get? Because there are all kinds of dice trays out there. I've, I've seen wood. I've seen lined wood, plastic. I've seen square ones, hexagonal ones, round ones, um, sump made out of silicon, PU leathers popular, folding ones, magnetic ones, snap together ones. And as I said, converted ammo box ones. Um, just like the place I see these all the time is I spend quite a bit of time on Etsy because there are some amazing tabletop crafters out there making awesome things to upgrade your games. And dice trays are one of the most popular items. Almost Not every shop, but like it feels like 25% of the shops I go to for one thing or another also sell dice trays and dice towers. So you're going to find a huge range of handmade for it and made trays. Now, along with that, there are a number of companies out there that now specialize in made dice trays. Now, personally, I'm going to shout out Easy Roller Dice because they gave me my favorite tray back there. And I'm not just saying that because they gave it to me to show off their stuff. It's really nice. Like, it is fantastic. I love this dice tray. And like, there's Easy Roller, there's other companies, and Amazon's just filled with them. If you go on Amazon and search for dice tray, you're going to find snap together, fold together, hexagonal square, and so on. Yeah. And one thing you can also really find in the handmade trays are dice trays that aren't just a dice tray. And this mm -hmm. may help, uh, you know, help you make your decision. So if you're a digital RPGer, if you're an RPGer who's got their tablet, you can probably find a mm -hmm. dice tray with a tablet stand built right into it. Yeah. Yeah, there's all kinds of stuff like that, right? Where where it's like a character card holder with dice tray and yeah. things like that for all kinds of... I was almost in a Gloomhaven. There's no dice in Gloomhaven. <laughs> Gloomhaven popped to my... Uh, Zombicide, there's one I've seen where it's Zombicide yeah. character trays with extra dice. So this is what I think you don't want. Now, this is generic, right? This is what I wouldn't want. We'll go that way. This is what I wouldn't want. And I think it's going to apply to most people. But there are probably people out there that will want some of these features, but in general. But I'm going to go into why. So... I mentioned them earlier, handmade wooden trays. Um, these are all over Etsy. They're usually really striking. They're usually made of beautiful woods that are treated and uh, what do you call that when you varnished or whatever they do, mm -hmm. dyed and varnished. And then they have awesome artwork for the bottom, right? Like the bottom of the tray will feature all kinds of stuff. Whatever you're into, you can find it. These all look great. But there's a couple things, and I've seen it mainly in reviews, and I've seen it happen to a local friend who's bought one of these, is that the rolling especially using metal dice has damaged that art and there's the problem we mentioned earlier about how loud they are dice rolling onto like, like it's worse than a table a table like you know i don't know how i don't know the physics of it but it's a big piece of wood versus smaller piece of wood echoes more or less so these also are you don't want to use your gemstone dice on them because they're hard surfaces your metal dice are probably going to damage the trays um now what there is out there and i've seen many of these are wooden trays with a felt bottom that's better but then many of these use like thin felt that i've seen it where the felt starts peeling up and coming apart and then many of them don't have felt on the sides so while it's quiet rolling into it it's still bouncing off wooden edges so you still have dice hitting wood 
Yeah, and sometimes it's not even actually felt. It's actually just like a flocking. Yeah. And that's where you're going to start getting the wear and tear on them. And you're just not, it's not going to last as a soundproof surface. The noise will build slowly and yeah. slowly the longer you use it. Yeah, and if they lacquer that bottom so you don't damage it, that's got that lacquer clacker yeah, yeah. sound. <laughs> you get that higher pitched, the higher pitched clack to it. Yes, exactly. So I'm like, how do I describe dice sounds? <laughs> Uh, the other thing, and many of these wood ones are like this, is I don't like square trays. I see lots of square trays out there, uh, many of them being the handmade kind, but I also see them often made from laser cut wood. So you can get them from places that also do like wooden box inserts and stuff, and they'll feature like metal um, magnets or whatever to put them together. And they look great, but the dice, the corners are bad, like little edgy corners. Dice don't bounce out of corners. They tend to get stuck in there. And sometimes it can actually be hard to get the dice out, like just for scooping out the dice once you want to roll again. You don't want to have to pick up the whole tray and dump it out in your hand. And actually, I said square, but I guess any rectangular tray, anything that has corners isn't something I would want. Now, one of the, the, one, the one exception, I think, is, and there's a bunch of these on Etsy, are books. So essentially people have taken books or, or, or mm. made fake books books and you open up the books and that holds your dice and, yes. and those, those can be gorgeous. And for something that pretty and, and that sort of decorative, I will sacrifice a little bit of the, having those corners. But in general, if you're just having a dice tray for the purposes mm. of being a dice tray, no, you don't want 90 degree corners. See, even the books, though, I've seen good ones where they just put a little piece of wood in the corners. Right. So you're you're just taking that little edge out, right? So that the actual inside of the book is an elongated hexagon, I right. guess. <laughs> I'm like failing for words here right. to describe what I'm talking about. No, no 90 degree corners. That's what we're, no we're 90 trying to avoid angles. 90 yes. degree corners. And, well, anything more acute than that, too, is probably also bad. Yeah. All right. You don't want anything heavy. Uh, this is another problem with trays made of real wood. Real wood can be heavy, uh, though, depending on the wood, there is some real wood that's light. And then more so the hardware used to assemble them, right? Like someone had to put these together and maybe they use glue and that'd be pretty light, but often they use some set screws or brackets or whatever to put them together. Uh, the book Sean's mentioning, they usually have some kind of clasp and a hinge. All of that weighs much, weighs more. And now if you only play at home, it's not a big deal. You're just grabbing it off your shelf. You're putting it on the table. But if you're transporting it, like I'm not going to want to carry around what looks like a big sorcerer's tome filled with miniatures and dice around a con. Although unless it's part of like a cosplay prop, maybe. But even then, I'd rather carry a big foam book around as a prop than a big chunk of wood with a bunch of stuff stuck inside it. Yeah, there, there's a lot of super decorative one, like necromancer yes. dice trays or mm -hmm. dungeon dice trays. And these are gorgeous if you're sitting in it, if you're putting it on your big game table at home, but these are not something you're ever going to want to transport anywhere. Right. For one thing, you you might damage it. Like these mm -hmm. are usually nice enough that transporting them around is going to make you nervous yeah. of damaging it or, you know, having someone play with it too roughly at the FLGS. Yep. And though I hate to admit it, those are also the kind of things that tend to go missing at game conventions. Same for any dice tray, actually. So that is something. Keep your eye on your tray, especially if you stuffed it with your dice. Mm -hmm. um, you don't want a big too, tray that's too big. Now, uh, and this is so based on the kind of games you play. Uh, these are going to be great for games with tons of dice, but like you don't need a ton of room to roll a lot of dice. Big trays are heavier. They're harder to transport. They're harder to store. You don't really need anything bigger. I don't know. What are they a foot? Like, what's that standard size? Like the size you have, that's about a foot. I'm thinking. Uh, I, I, like that even. seems to have become yeah, kind of a, a standard. Ten, 10 inches, probably. I think. Yeah, something like like that. You definitely. You don't even need that big. I don't think. But that's good for a, a nice tray area. Um, which actually, I'll just throw it in right now. You also don't want anything too small. <laughs> I have seen these really tiny little dice trays. Um, again, mostly on Etsy. Oh, um, that are great for like maybe rolling a single D20. And they tend to come with these sets. It's like got a spot, a stand for your miniature and a spot to put your pencil. And you have this little, little like bowl to roll into. And I'm like, yeah, maybe that's great for a D20 game or something or a D100 game or on 2D10 and that's it. But like, that's going to be completely useless if you're playing most board games where you roll more than a couple dice. Yeah, I mean, and even if you are playing something like Shadowrun and you've got, you know, a, a 15 or a 20 dice pool, you only need enough space for the dice to all lay flat on and not, you know, stack on top of each other. If the dice are bouncing off of each other when you roll, that's fine. That's just adding to the yep. randomness. 
which actually I don't have that in here. We we could possibly talk about a whole uh, dice tray etiquette that is important. Roll all your dice at once. Don't roll some, then roll other dice into them and try to hit the dice already there to get them to roll better. That is not cool. If you enjoy that, go buy the game Strike from Ravensburger and just play that because that's what it's all about. Don't do that during my game. That's just ridiculous. Trying to fix your own dice rolls. There, one 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 dice tray etiquette tip. There you go. That drives me nuts. I've seen people do it, and I'm just like, come on. Like, like you may as well just set the die to whatever side and tell me a number because there's no <laughs> point in what you're doing. Um, I don't like the the floppy silicon. Again, I'm, my vocabulary is terrible for this episode, I guess. But I don't know if you know what I'm talking about, but like the, the type, like muffin tin type and the type that people often buy for bowls uh, for component control during a board game, right? They, they're, they're usually so the muffin tins or, or sorry, muffin cups or snap together trays. And they sell these for like putting your keys in when you get home from work too. The problem I find with these is they're too floopy. Like, like the dice are heavier than the material. So you'll roll a die and it'll basically just kind of roll over the edge and like, or the whole tray will tip up as soon as a die hits it. Now these are great, like for, for components, like if you want to play Terraforming Mars, you put all your cubes in one or whatever game you're playing. I don't know why particularly that one came up. Grab silicon trays, like a component, but don't use those for rolling your dice in. Yeah, no, you, if the whole purpose of a dice tray is to contain your dice. Mm. So if it fails in that one basic task <laughs> above all else, it's not the right tool. And with that, if you've got di a dice tray that's either too deep and you can't see your dice or too mm -hmm. shallow and you bounce over the edges every time, again, it's not doing the one job it's there to do. Yes. Now, too deep, argue, you can argue, but it, no one wants to be standing up and craning over oh. to stare at the dice every time. You want to be able to look at it as easy as if you rolled it just in front of you. Yeah, if you're getting too deep, you might as well use a box top at that point. There you go. As far as I'm concerned. All right, things I would actually look for in a dice tray. Now that we got some stuff we, we, we're not interested in, we don't like, we think have issues. This is the kind of stuff I'm looking for. This is what I want. Uh, most importantly, no, I, I think Sean's got the most important point. What he just said. So I, I'll, I'll let him reiterate it after this. Second, the second most important thing is a surface that'll protect your dice. I want it to be padded or PU leather or have leather bottom, velvet lined, whatever it is. I want that and I want the entire surface covered, not just the bottom. I want the edges to have some type of protection as well, because there's no point in trying to protect my dice from here if they're going to bounce off the walls, which are hard. So first off, though, hold the dice. Keep yeah. the dice inside. If it doesn't do the one thing, which is a, be a place for the dice to roll in and stay in to show and mm -hmm. keep your dice in, there's no point in it. I prefer hexagonal. Uh, no corners. Well, there's edges, but they're, they're wide enough corners. The dice aren't going to hide in them and they're not going to get stuck in. Um, plus, actually, hexagonal is designed. So when the dice bounce off the whole angle of incidence equals angle of reflection, it tends to bounce them towards the middle of the tray. So they're usually grouped in the middle instead of on the edges. I am definitely a fan of the hexagonal. Um, I'm sure octagonal would actually work. I don't know why everything ended up hexagonal, like if, how that became the industry standard, but it seems like it is. I'm sure there's some geometry about the snaps that makes it easier for, for hexagonal. No, but like even mine that's not snaps is hexagonal. Okay. So uh, speaking of storing your dice, you may want to find a dice tray with a dice staging area. Now there's mm -hmm. a lot of these out there in various ways. Uh, Moe's got one with a rim around the outside mm -hmm. of the rolling area to store dice in. Some have separate containers off to the side. Some are divided in the tray. So a lot of the, a lot of the rectangular mm -hmm. ones, you've got a rolling area and a storing area. Uh, again, if you're going to have something that doesn't fl fold flat like mine for easy transport, you want something that's going mm -hmm. to store the dice as well. Yeah, so that, that's, a, that's another aspect to look at, right? You want something easy to transport. Basically, it's the same thing we said about box inserts. If it actually improves the game and makes it more useful and you're willing to do it, it's worth doing. So if anything you can do to get a dice tray you'll use is going to make it for a better dice tray, right? Versus a big heavy one or one you can't fit in your bag or whatever. So you're looking at light, small enough that you can bring it anywhere and use it to store dice as well. So it's got that added functionality. You want something that's easy to use that you will actually use instead of just sitting on your shelf. And what's great for that are the ones like Sean has. Absolutely. 
Uh, actually, I actually just came across another one, and I don't want to flaunt any shops, but it's a foam dice tray. So again, it's light, it's easy mm -hmm. to carry, it's soft for your dice, it's quiet for your dice, but the top of it, the top lid, actually has pluck foam designed for dice. So you actually, okay. so it's got like a D20 shape and a D12 shape and D4 shape, D6 shape. So you actually flip your dice tray over and the, the lid of it has got spots for all the different, your different okay. dice type. And it's also a nice little dice tray. Oh, that's cool. I assume you'd carry it upside down so they don't slowly slide out. Yeah, but either if they do, it's a yeah. foam dice tray. So. <laughs> yeah, and then the, the dice trays that, that are everywhere now is the ones like Sean has, right? There are the collapsible, a way to make them flat. Um, there are ones that go together with magnets. There's ones that use snaps. There's ones that you, I've actually seen one where you actually roll around the outside of a dice tower. Right. And then it like magnetically attaches to it. Um, the most popular, the magnet and snap ones. Uh, there's even ones where there's like something done where the, with the, like the leather. So it kind of snaps into itself. Uh, those are great. The, you can find these ridiculously cheap if you shop around. Now there are name brand ones that cost more, possibly better quality. I'm not gonna judge, but like these are the kind of things that actually show up on sites like Wish, like fairly regularly. Like you can you can sometimes find these at ridiculously low prices. Now I'm gonna guess you may be getting what you pay for, but you know what? If they're that cheap, maybe if they do wear, you buy another one. Yeah. Uh, I got mine. I got mine on Etsy uh, through one of the links you shared you shared yeah. on uh along the way but again it was i'd, I'd have to go back and dig because see it what was, the price is it was, yeah. well it was uh before march of last year when oh, i purchased yeah. it so really, honestly while. the prices range like yeah. the, they're they're all over the board so shop around um make sure you check reviews right especially you're looking at etsy read scroll down read the reviews see what other people have said so one of the things i do like about the collapsible, and I know a friend who does this, and they are cheap enough, and he makes enough money, right? For him, it's affordable. Is he actually owns multiples and leaves them in the games that need them? So he actually has multiple board games that have multiple flat dice towers that sit on top of everything. So when you lift the box, first thing that's there is a dice tower, or sorry, dice tray. And he color coded them, right? Like this game has a brown one because it's a Western theme, and this game has a yellow one because it's an Egyptian theme and it's in the desert and so on. So, if you can find them that cheap, that's also another thing. And for RPG players, now I know you don't want to damage your nice core rule books, but like some of these, depending on the what you got to watch for is the snaps and the magnets, right? How much those stick up, you might be able to just toss right in a rule book. Absolutely. Uh, all right. So, the last part of Emmett's question is about dice towers. Mm. Now, I know Mo's not a fan. No. Uh, you've gotten some over the years as promos and used them at cons. Uh, they seem a little unnecessary. Yeah. I, I Plus, they tend to be loud. I've never seen a padded dice tower, which is weird, actually, that no one's done that. But I've never seen a padded dice tower. They all click and clack and make lots of noise. And I think that's part of it, right? That's a, oh, listen, I'm rolling a die. Um, I personally think that um, towers should be safe for cubes. Um, and they should be able to trap stuff inside them, like Shogun and Wallenstein. And actually, there's a newer one. Oh, I can't remember the name of it. It's got a pirate theme where you drop stuff through the mast. And they're actually dice in this one. But again, they can get stuck. That's really cool. For this type of dice tower, you don't want stuff that'll get stuck. That'd be terrible. <laughs> Not at all. Uh, yeah, again, these are generally made to be noisy. Yes. Um, and that's an issue. But on the other side, with me, with my little quirk about watching people roll dice, you don't have to worry about that. A, a decently, even a half decently made dice tower, it's going to bounce around in there. You're guaranteed to have some level of randomness coming out. Yeah, so th that is one of the biggest beliefs about dice towers. They're more random. Again, I don't know. I don't know if I buy this one. A die rolled properly on a table should have an equal chance of ending on any side. That's the whole point of it being a die. A dice but, tower shouldn't increase the odds of this. But the, my, the, the problem is whether or not people are rolling properly on a table. Right, that's that's gets, always the question. <laughs> yeah, so, so I was going to say, if dice towers were more random, that's what you'd see at casinos. Right. instead of rolling the dice on a table, making it bounce off a wall. But yeah, the big thing that dice towers are for for people is to prevent cheating. Personally, I honestly think that if you think this is a problem at your table, you've got bigger problems than needing a dice tower. You need to fix the cheater. Like nowadays, there's no reason you need to game with someone who feels the need to cheat during a friendly game. 
but yes, dice towers. That is that is their their big fix. Is they keep it random so no one can cheat. I just don't have people to cheat your game with, and you don't need a dice tower. Fair. Now I will say, dice towers look awesome, right? So I, I got to go with that. My my the one I own, I still own, is a little meeple back there. It's cute, it's neat, but like I have seen some really cool looking towers. Um, not only can they look cool, they can be thematically tied into the games you're playing. So wingspan from Elizabeth Hargrave is a perfect example of this where it comes with a dice tower that looks like a bird feeder or sorry, like a bird home, what you, a bird house. And I'm like, ah, oh, that's just really cool. It looks really neat. It looks pretty and it's thematic, right? Like it kind of ties everything together. Now I've also seen ones, uh, dice trays that actually include, sorry, dice towers that include dice trays. I'm like, that's a nice touch where it's at the end. And I've seen medieval ones. I've seen cyberpunk ones. And one of the ones I'm going to mention is you should check out Broken Token because they actually have this thing where they basically made Rube Goldberg dice towers. And you can buy any number of them. They all stack and they all work together. Now, these are fancy. These are like, you know, one's a burning skull. And when it comes in, the skeletal hand catches the die and drops it into another hand and drops into another hand and drops it at the bottom. And then you can attach it to another one that's all these steampunk gears. And when the die turns, it turns the gears and makes a clock turn on the front. Like they are fantastic looking. Most but trap. I don't <laughs> Most trap yeah. the dice roller. Yeah, basically. Right. I'm like, all right, they look cool. I'll, I'll give you that. I will totally give you that. Uh, so one thing is they can help things keep organized. So much yeah. like with a dice tray, uh, perhaps a dice tray may be better. But again, if you're if you're on a stream or something like that, if everyone drops it into the dice thing and it comes out, and it's got a little tray at the bottom. Again, you've got a nice place for cameras to pick it mm -hmm. up with. And, it, you know, everyone's doing the same thing, rolling the same way, the same place. Uh, it can be handy, handy for that. Yeah, and again, it's, it's going to keep it all in one area and probably doesn't go all over the table though i have seen some dice towers that tend to shoot them dice across the table when you're done so you might want to combine that with something now another thing i do get out of dice towers is the dramatic effect that we can be given for using them especially if you don't use it for every role or if you play a game that doesn't have a lot of roles like i've seen a dice tower at an rpg game where this the dm had this like evil looking dice tower we'll just say and they played most of the game rolling their dice on the table but then all of a sudden when it's like oh the big dragon takes in a deep breath and he breathes and he drops the like 17 d6s into the tower before seeing what the results spread out on the table and everyone looking and counting them up so i get it that is really i can i can understand the flourish right like the people doing that a big crucial role um one great way to do this is um i don't think you can get it anymore but at one point, Wizards of the Coast put out this deluxe DM screen for Dungeons and Dragons. I think we might have been playing fourth edition at the time when that came out. And it features two towers on the off the side of the front panel. And they're each dice towers. And tower one dropped the dice towards the players and power two dropped them towards the DM. So it was great for those big rolls, right? Like, oh, here comes the damage roll and drop it on the player side. And you're going to scare the heck out of your players if they're just doing something mundane and all of a sudden you drop a D20 in that DM side. So there is that dramatic flair that you can get from using dice towers. Absolutely. And again, we get back into the superstition issue that we <laughs> had before. Uh, just like some people need to roll on in their dice tray, there may be people who need to roll in their dice tower uh, it goes against the concept of being more random, mm -hmm. <laughs> but you know what? Some people have the, their quirks and that's fine. As long as it's not distracting from the game, taking away from the experience for everyone at the table, let them use it more power to them. Now I do have what I honestly think is the most important, most valuable thing a dice tower could possibly do being an able-bodied white guy i can roll my dice wherever the heck i want but that is not necessarily true for everyone dice towers can be and make a game more accessible they can be a way for someone who would have normally difficulty rolling dice whether that's shaky hands or arthritis or physical disability it's a way to allow more people to play at the table and this probably also applies to dice trays to i think a smaller amount but I think it definitely applies to dice towers. And it's one of the things, there's the one reason I will never question anyone using a dice tower if it's for an a, a accessibility issue. Because, I mean, there's no reason you can't have a dice tower where you preload the dice and that person with whichever disability just knocks them into the tower. Uh, yep. If that's all the motion they're capable to of, that's great. They're still rolling their dice and they're still playing in the game. And yes. that's what's important. So... 
And it's going to be a shorter list than earlier. What I would look for in a dice tower. So according to everyone, now everyone being those people who like dice towers, the important thing, the most important aspect of a dice tower is the number of ramps it has, has to be at least three, and what angles they're placed at. There have to be three different angles, at least, according to the experts. The more ramps, the more different angles, the more random and better the dice tower is. Again, I, I don't know how much truth there is to that, but it is definitely a thing for Dice Tower fans. Uh, go on board Game Geek and look up Dice Towers. You will see lots of people or just like find an item page with the Dice Tower and check the comments section to see the people say, oh, this don't. Dice Tower is not random enough or don't. don't read the get, comments. Or don't. <laughs> so one of the other things, uh, and now this is this is, this is is a little uh, different, it, but portability can be mm. a, an important feature. Um, how loud, how fragile, how collapsible, uh, if it's collapsible, how hard is it to set up again? If you, yeah. you know, if you, are you going to just not bother? Oh, I don't want to have to set that up today. Mm -hmm. Cause then I got to put these six different ang ramps in at these six different angles. I, <laughs> I'm just going to roll it on the table. If yeah. it's, if it's that again, if it's not getting the game to the table, what's the point? Even if it's yes. an RPG game. <laughs> no, honestly, that's why I don't use that meeple. That meeple is such a pain in the butt to put together, and it's not very, unless I glue it, it's not very well assembled. If you throw a die hard enough, one of the um, one one of the ramps will fall out, and it's right. not an official dice tray because it only has two, and they're both facing each other. <laughs> uh, so yeah, definitely. Um, the other thing to think of is is will it damage my dice? Because as I said, I've never seen a padded dice tower. Or will you damage the tower? If I throw a bunch of big, chunky, heavy metal dice into one of the... I wouldn't want to do that with one of those broken token, awesome Rube Goldberg machine dice trays. They're just that thin... I, I, birch wood, I think it is. I always forget. I want. I used to think it's balsa wood. It's not. I think it's birch that all their inserts are made out of. You don't want to be throwing a spiky D4 into your birch wood awesome thing you paid a fortune for. Uh, which leads us to the next point. They cost money. So one of the things to look at is the cost. Right. It definitely, definitely. Um, again, unless it's an accessibility issue, they do range in value. This is a, a nice to have. It looks pretty on the table. Absolutely. Again, if if you're going for that dramatic effect, I mean, we've done many episodes about setting the mood. If you, mm -hmm. you know, if you're going to drop the lights and have the mood music on and have a dice tower with glowing red eyes that blows mm -hmm. smoke out every, you know, as dice every time you you want to uh, attack the players, smoke. then great. But you don't need that. You can no. play the game at the kitchen table with all the lights on just yep. as well. No, I got to say, I, I do like that not, we live in a day and age where LEDs are so common and you could have that. That is something that would have been so awesome back in the 80s. I would have loved it, but it would have had a real candle in it and <laughs> something bad would have happened. That's all I know. Well, I mean, and to be fair, they have dice trays that have mood lighting in them. Yeah, I, I don't doubt it, to be honest. So, I can totally see a strip of LED on the inside yeah, yeah, yeah. matching the color or making it a, what are you, a complimentary color to your dice. There you go. So I don't know. You, you got any other reasons? Like, like, personally, I think dice towers and their use of personal preference thing. Um, again, except accessibility issues, that may be a forced choice, um, which is awesome. Use them for that reason. Absolutely. Some people like them. And you know what? Honestly, if it makes someone feel better, to use a dice tray, we'll use it. I don't care. I'm personally probably not going to bring one out to a table, but if someone insists I use one, I might give them a side eye for a second, like, wait, you don't trust me, but I'll use it. That's fine. Um, it, it's just not the thing I'm probably going to get, unless I can, you know, find a copy of that DM screen I was talking about, because that thing's pretty awesome. Because <laughs> I do like the dramatic moment. I really do. Like, I, I want to bring out the, the 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 boss fight dice tower that I only use when rolling for Tiamat or something like that. Right. With it, it has five different ways the dice can roll out randomly. And depending on what head it rolls out, that's the type of damage it does. So if it comes out the ice mouth, it's ice damage. And all oh, that sounds, now I want a Tiamat dice tower. So, so Someone make a Tiamat dice tower and give it to me to review because I'm yeah. sure I won't be able to afford it. There we go. So again, I, again, it, if it's going to help you play, it's important. If it's going to get a game to the table or get you playing more often or playing mm -hmm. playing uh, more frequently or easier, yeah, that's great. If it's just something you want, if it's in your budget, awesome. But yeah. do take a look at some of the features we talked about and decide whether or not it's something that once you've spent that money on it, you're actually going to end up using on any regular basis. Yeah, so just jumping back to, to summarize... In general, we're basically fans of dice towers, 
or dice trays. Sorry, we're, we're <laughs> fans of dice trays. Jumping back to the beginning, the start of the topic. We are fans of dice trays. I, I don't use them all the time, but they definitely serve a purpose. They're definitely useful. They definitely keep the dice corralled. We're not sharing dice. There's lots of good reasons to have dice trays. I strongly recommend, uh, and not everyone needs one, but like there's no reason not to, except for cost. If you can afford one, like like Emmett's like, should I get one? Should I make them for my friends? Definitely. Like your wife wants, you, wants to make dice towers, give them out to your players. That is awesome. Now, I know you said the rectangular might be better. What I would do is find a pattern for one of those snap sets like, like Sean has. Find, I'm sure they're out there. I, I didn't look myself, and I'm sure you can find a pattern to make the, the hexagonal snap together, attached together dice trays. Dice towers, on the other hand, except for the case where it's something necessary to let you play the game, uh, take it or leave it. Not for me. I, I don't care. I could see using one for a big dramatic moment, but that's about it. Yeah. I, I One one thing I, I was just thought of, if you have been playing in a, a you know, a game, that, that D&D game that's been going on for eight years and you're looking for a gift for your DM, mm. a nice dramatic dice tower could be something the players could all get together and buy. But again, something to buy for yourself. I, I struggle I struggle with that one. They're, they're, a, they're a better gift than they are a purchase for oneself. So thinking about using, um, like we had a really long running AD&D campaign that featured the same mercenary company all the time. And we had heraldry that featured griffins, right? So I'm thinking if that group got together and bought a griffin dice tray, we would love it for at least one session, maybe two. But then it would end up on the shelf. It would be a knickknack. It would be an awesome thing in the background that right. looks cool, that would be up there, that maybe would be like, oh, we're about to fight the bear and bring out the dice tower. <laughs> but I, I, it wouldn't get used, at least my group. All right. Well, that's what we have today for our discussion on dice trays and dice towers. Now let's head over to the lobby and see if anyone in our chat room has questions or further suggestions. All right, lobbyists, now that you've heard our thoughts on dice trays and towers, what are your thoughts on these rolling tools? And we've had quite a few here. Uh, we're going to go back to Galabond, who says, I like the hexagonal dice trays that can be unfastened and flattened mm -hmm. out at game stores. Dice yep. towers take up a bit too much space for me. In mm -hmm. D&D 5 Ed, I like using them when I'm playing a thief with sneak attack damage. When you get a critical and have to roll 2d8 plus 6d6 damage, it's nice to have that tray. Okay, I thought he was saying they wiped them for a tower, but he, he likes it to roll it in a dice tray, which is fair. Okay. Though that's one where I might want to use a tower just for the look how many dice I'm rolling. <laughs> Big dramatic, I sneak attack him four. Right. So there is that your aspect. Fire, your too. fireball damage. You yes, know? exactly. Right. Your fireball damage. Though some dice towers don't handle, there's something we should have mentioned. When you're buying a dice tower, let's see how many dice it'll handle at once. That is one of the disadvantages of these broken tokens. They are for one die at a time. Like yeah. I said, they have these like mechanics where they drop stuff. Well, some of them, like some are and some aren't, but like there's definitely this one that passes dice between hands and maybe it has a way to funnel them. So only one comes in at once, but it's very much the, what I keep seeing is the bottle cap machines that people are putting in the garages. That's what it reminds me of. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so then we have uh, Angie games. Uh, I like the tray with the corral around the edge that you guys have from easy roller. Yeah. Uh, it's in the background there. It's large, so it does take up some table real estate. But when you are rolling with 14 dice, that takes yeah. up too much space as well. So for those of you here live, this is the one I got from Easy Roller Dice. So it goes together like this. It is PU leather. But like that's not thin. Yeah. And honestly, this is not light. I wouldn't call it heavy, but it's not light. Yeah. So what I love is that this can be your standard big open space dice roller. Yeah. Right. This is great. This is what I use for my metal dice. It just has the pew leather. So it's still a little loud. You get a like sound on yep. it. The dice I have here are wood. So I don't know if they'll make much of a sound. There you go. Yeah. You get dice sound. But what I love is this, the two tiered tray where this is actually higher than that. This is meant to be your staging area. So you would put all your dice around the edge. Again, these are, these are dice my daughter maybe, which is kind of cool around the edge and then you pass the tray and you grab what you need and you roll them in the middle. Now this is a fairly small rolling area, but it works great for anything we played. Yeah. Like we were, we were up to like 20 dice pools, I think in Sorcerer at one point. And you can tell it's a little quieter. 
than the other. But this isn't going to get damaged. This isn't felt. I don't honestly know what that material is that they use. I, I don't know. And the other thing is this is actually padded. So if you're pushing down on the dice, this is great for like your metal dice or whatever. Yeah. Or heavy dice. So again, yeah. easyrollerdice.com. And it cause I just I dig this. Deanna is a big fan of wolves. Kind of reminded me of Elf Quest. It was a neat pattern. Now, as uh, Galabond also mentions, you're not a real D&D player until you have a Crown Royal bag for go. every type of dice in the game. Oh, jeez. Uh, <laughs> uh, even if you no longer play D&D, Tech mentions, you must have a Crown Royal bag. And Angie Games brings up your Crown Royal bag shelf that is downstairs. Yes. Uh, Crown Royal bags, yes, are the staple of role-playing games for yes. many years now. Many years. It's the most expensive dice bag you'll ever buy, but it comes with some free whiskey. Yep. Uh, and yeah, I'm definitely a fan. Major Kayla joined us a little late, but uh, I, Owen, her husband, loves like using his 3D printed dice tower uh, and a gifted R2D2 one. So, if oh, you, that's you know, cool. if you're a if you're a Star Wars fan, yeah, I can true. definitely yeah. see. Now, I think the 3D printed one he has, if I remember, is the spiral staircase one. That I actually have a link, and I'll try to find it when I drop it in the show notes, to the first person who made it before everyone on Etsy got the STL file and stole it. Right. So I will put a link to the original on there, and it comes in a variety of colors. And that is one of the coolest dice towers I've ever seen. Though, if you listen to the purists, it's not a real dice tower because it's just a set of stairs in a spiral, and there's no opposing ramp for it to bounce off of, so it's not actually random. There's actually, I, there's actually even some I've seen that are essentially um, pipes that are twisted into a... And there, there is no stair. There are no ramps at all. It's a, it's okay. a, it's a basically a sort of a DNA, a complex DNA sort oh, of thing wow. okay. where things just kind of get caught and roll. Um, and I, again, I have no idea, no care if it's random, but they look gorgeous. Yeah. So, so, so sorry. Owens is actually a tower that folds up. Oh, okay. so it's got like the tray at the bottom as well. Right. Yep. So the spiral one, I, I, I that's the one that tempts me the most because it mm -hmm. just looks the neatest and it's in a clear tube. So you see the die rolling the whole time. Right. And like I said, they're, they're available in different colors and stuff like that. And there are knockoffs out there. I've seen like there, I've seen a really nice Cthulhu one that I kind of wanted when we were playing death may die. Right. Just because it was this whole Cthulhu thing and you dropped it in his head and it came out in random spots. Those are the ones I like. I like it when there's multiple ways it can come out. I think that's neat. And so I, again, tech, not great for... Tech mentioned, and I think this really kind of sums up a lot of what we're saying about Dice Towers. Dice Towers are just for decoration on the board game shelf. And yeah. uh, so often, that's really what they become. Even if they're really cool and you use them for a couple of games, they end up, those towers, yeah. they're they're pretty. That's why most people have bought them. Yeah. And so they end up as decoration. Not yeah, that that's a bad the, thing, but... No. At Meeple One, actually, we had a discussion today looking at them. Like, I'm probably going to keep it up here to put in our podcast backdrops because it's a nice little 3D Meeple. Yeah. But I can't remember the last time I used that as a dice tower. And I got that for the first ever Will Wheaton's International Tabletop Day held at Hugo in Munich. That was, a, was a, a bonus giveaway. And because I helped organize the event, I got the one dice tower. That was a gift and, from and the store And to be owner. fair, I didn't know you had a dice tower at yeah. all. So, so there you shows go. how often it's been used. Yeah. Like <laughs> I, 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 I extra, it, that, that's something we, we, we missed actually when we were talking about both. It's an extra step. Yep. which I, I don't know it takes time it takes effort it's it's an extra step which could make your game nights longer if you're playing an epic game that's going to take forever you want your uh, terraforming mars doesn't have dice you want your six hour game to be at a five hour game <laughs> if you remove that extra step of gathering the dice dropping them and reading them and just throw it on the table you're actually saving a bit of time every time yep all right well. all right Thanks for uh, all the lobbyists' comments tonight and uh, and input. Remember, if you've got a game or game night question for us, all you got to do is head over to the website, click on Ask the Bellhop, or fire off an email to questions at tabletopbellhop.com. Tabletop Bellhop, one word. 